Here in the UK, we do love a period property. I never dreamt I would own a castle. For me, it looks like a typical doll's house. From countryside houses... It was everything you could dream of. It was a palace. ..to timeless terraces. I turned up and I thought, whoa, this is pretty cute. But beneath the grand facades... Hopefully the house won't fall down. We'll see, will we? These historical homes are falling to bits. Everyone told us to tear this building down. All over the country, an army of renovators are snapping them up at knockdown prices. I think we should leave it like this. It looks old timely. Then facing challenges of epic proportions. <laughs> I said all along to get a new build. This series, we meet the brave new renovators. Well, we're looking for a bungalow with a shed. And return to our familiar band of determined dreamers. Who else has got a chapel in their house? All risking everything. I thought I had a good idea what was needed. I was quite wrong. People think renovation's lovely, don't they? <laughs> oh, God, I'm trembling. To create the forever home of their dreams. Oh, my God, it's so nice! Brick by brick. Whoa, this is amazing. Room by room. I'm still having my pinch me moment. We're nowhere near finished, but it feels like a house now. We are a renovation nation. Today... <laughs> We rejoin Lucy and Seb, whose plans of bath time bliss are somewhat flawed. So these are the old joists that basically went all the way to there, but there was uh, some sort of leak in the wall and they were, they were rotten. I just can't wait to light the fire and, like, sit in the bath. I mean, how lush is that? We're back with Anushka and Greg as they try to uncover a secret of their 187-year-old home. Everyone seems to think that if there is a secret room or a secret tunnel, it's under the kitchen. And we return to Rosie and Anthony's farmhouse renovation, where a concealed fireplace has some news, not so hot off the press. Thursday, March the 19th, 1959. Look at these wedding photographs. This is a social history yeah. bit of it, isn't it? In North Lincolnshire's Barrow Pond Humber stands this beautiful 10-bedroom Georgian farmhouse, being brought back to its former glory by renovation duo Lucy and Seb. They're very heavy. Don't get cross at me. It's a balancing act working full-time and renovating together in order to keep costs down as much as they can. Oh, God. Are you sure that's right? Earlier this week, we saw Lucy and Seb shoulder renovating responsibilities in what will become their main bedroom. Getting hands on with the boarding out. I'm on my tiptoes, all this ballet training has come in handy. Rolling up their sleeves and learning traditional lime plastering skills. Together, one each side. Oh gosh, so we're competing. Oh gosh. <laughs> and working around the clock to complete the first phase of their main bedroom. So I'm hoping that by four months, we'll have this space finished. Yeah. Alongside creating their dream bedroom, Lucy and Seb are turning their attention to a luxurious ensuite. I just can't wait to light the fire and, like, sit in the bath. I mean, how lush is that? And true to form, Lucy takes on the role of taskmaster. Seb can get plumbing and, yeah. But then we're going to need to pick things like tiles for the shower, which is... I don't think Sam can cope thinking about right now, can you? One step too far, I think. With rotten flooring to fix, walls to plaster, and a period bath to be restored, there's a lot to do before they'll be cracking open the bubbly with the bubbles. So these are the old joists that basically went all the way to there, but there was uh, some sort of leak in the wall and they were, they were rotten. So we're basically just going to put new ones in at shorter joy spans, so it's stronger. As the house has been open to the elements for over 20 years, some of the original wooden floor has warped and needs replacing. It's just steady progress. And I don't do, do well with steady. I like to just be like... I like to see... Like, I'll be fine once this, these joists are in and they're... Um, and we've got boards on, then I'll be like, OK, that's fine. Seb is making space for the new floor joists to sit. Oh, my God. Don't do that by hand. 
He stands on ladders on one leg. Do you want me to get it from this angle? Yeah. I'll catch you if you fall. I'll be knocking you off the ladder if I fall. <laughs> a chemical resin has been used to anchor threaded studs into the brick wall before bolting on wall plates where joist hangers will be fixed to support the new joists. There's a lot to do, but Lucy can't hang around as she has to return to work. Latest potato. Leaving Seb to crack on single-handed. Can you send me progress pictures of all of these in, this sword, the joists in, and the boards nailed and glued, please? It shouldn't take you very long. <laughs> OK. Never does a full day. Just four hours later, and Seb has been working flat out, managing to attach eight new floor joists into position. Get a progress pic for Lucy. She always likes them. Yeah, she'll like, like to see those in. Oh, she'll be beaming. Hopefully I uh, get a nice, yeah, happy wife when she gets home. But with the entire room back to brick and not a bathroom suite in sight, it's safe to say luxurious hot soaks are still a pipe dream. Over 350 miles away, on the North Cornish coastline, above the fishing village of Boscastle, stands Penally House. Built by a Georgian businessman, rumoured to be a smuggler, its new owners have more reputable jobs. Anushka's an interior designer, and husband Greg's an art printer. With four teenage children between them, they bought Penally House in 2021 as their forever family home. It felt like a really gorgeous family home, didn't it? It's just joy. Earlier this week, we saw Anushka and Greg move on to phase two of their renovation, converting one of their basement rooms into an Art Deco-inspired cinema room for the family to enjoy. It does feel like a secret cinema, which is the feel that we wanted to create, that it was kind of a secret a hidden nice. room. Today, Greg and Anushka are turning their attention to the second basement room, where they plan to clean and paint the walls, spruce up the damaged ceiling and restore the stone-flagged flooring to transform the space into a boutique hotel-inspired bedroom. And they're talking through their plans with cabinet maker John. This is my favourite room down here, John. Here, there was obviously a fireplace and there's a flue. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Here, you can actually see. Um, that's the lintel, I think, isn't it? That... Yeah. But it's not just uncovering an original fireplace that's fired up Anushka's excitement. Ever since they bought the house, tales of smugglers' tunnels and hidden rooms have led them to believe that just possibly, somewhere in the basement, there could be a secret tunnel entrance. I mean, the other thing to think about is what is behind that wall. Might be worth just chasing that out just to no. find out. Find the tunnel. Find the secret room with a pot of gold. Well, now's the time to do it. I know. In the 18th century, Cornwall was a centre for smuggling. Contraband like brandy and gin were brought in through tunnels in the cliffs. Local legend has it that the original owner of Penali House had his own smuggler's tunnel that led from a cave entrance by the sea to somewhere in Greg and Anushka's home. There's too many hints that there's something there. People stop us in the village. You're the, you're the owners of Penali House. Have you found the tunnel? Everyone talks about it. Greg and Anushka have been searching for evidence of the smuggler's tunnel for over a year. It's very hollow down there. They started by looking under flagstones in the garden. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> okay. They even asked a local historian about the unusual layout of their basement. The corner there yeah. is either built into bedrock. Or potentially there's or, a space behind yeah, there. Yeah, space, yeah. yeah. There's this idea of old houses having spaces that were yeah. hidden from the revenue men or hidden from the customs men, you know, that they knew that they were there and could store this, yeah. you know, the contraband in it. Following the advice of the historian, Anushka and Greg are looking for evidence of the hidden room. This looks a bit suspect. And they're starting in an understairs cupboard, directly above the bricked up fireplace in the basement. And from talking to locals, everyone seems to think that 
if there is a secret room or a secret tunnel, it's under the kitchen. And the cupboard would lead to under the kitchen. Greg's sure he's onto something. This is not natural. This is not bedrock. No. This has definitely been backfilled, 100%. Like a cupboard filled with soil, like why would you, why would you have a cupboard filled with soil? So what so, if it was? If it, if it was a shaft, then they just filled in the shaft. It's not a tunnel which comes up into a room. It's a shaft which leads down into a room under the kitchen, which makes sense where this cupboard is. Oh, First one, yeah. I'll start loading the next. This is a wall. This is a wall. The walls. Hundred percent. No way. Yeah, this is a wall. After two hours of digging, there's a breakthrough. Well, it goes all the way down. Yeah. Absolutely, completely vertical. This keeps going. This is so exciting. Greg thinks this could be the opening. But for now, the house is holding on to its secret history. Clearly a wall. I've been told by many people that it's a shaft down to connect to the tunnel to the sea. So I think I might be in here for a few more weeks. But it's definitely exciting. For Penali's very own Harry Potter, a few more weeks digging might be pushing it. Ugh, God damn it. Oh, my God. Oh, they're coming back to life now. Oh, blood's rushing through to my feet. <laughs> Success. <laughs> And with the basement room demanding all their attention, it's no secret that Greg and Anushka are going to be very busy indeed. Coming up, the writings on the wall at Rosie and Anthony's farmhouse renovation. It's September the 12th, 1899, paper hanger. It was such an understandable thing to kind of sign your name because you were proud of what you'd done. And Lucy and Seb strive for a picture-perfect design as work on their ensuite continues. Not just a door frame, it's like a picture frame, so it's framing the view into there from out here. That has to be exactly in line with the fireplace, which then means it's exactly in line with the roll-top bath and where the taps are. In the Scottish borders on the River Teviot, near Hoyk, stands this imposing five-bedroomed farmhouse. Empty for two years and in a desperate state of decay, it was thrown a lifeline when it was purchased for £615,000 by Rosie, a creative consultant, and architectural antiques dealer, Anthony. Earlier this week, we saw Rosie and Anthony begin to turn one bedroom into a huge bathroom suite and another into a stunning studio space. They also started the mammoth task of transporting their collection of unusual and salvaged antiques from their old Yorkshire base to their new home. The farmhouse, built during the Georgian period, is full of secrets waiting to be uncovered. Today, Rosie and Anthony are on the hunt for clues from that past. What we're doing first, we're looking at fireplace first, Yep, easy one first, fireplace. Let's, right, let's have a look. That looks nice. Oh, wow. Shall I pull? What do you reckon, Tig? <laughs> wow. That's a bit more like it. Yeah. Proper stone surround. Give it a clean up and, and a paint, and uh, that'll, be, that'll be lovely. See so when. That's Newspaper nice. was last put in there. What paper is it? You, you read that bit. Scottish Border Newspaper, Thursday, March the 19th, 1959. Look at these wedding photographs. Border News. This is a social history bit yeah. of it, isn't it? So you're always finding bits of... Look at that sweet wrapper or whatever it is. Does anybody remember Kimi's? <laughs> Kimi's sweet wrappers, chocolate bars. 62-year-old yeah. sweet wrapper. Yeah. I'll put that up there before dog licks chocolate off it. Yeah, that's right. It's telling a story of who lived here, the area. We, we love this stuff. We love it. Downstairs in the sitting room, the story of who lived and worked here is also evident, 
as Rosie has discovered signatures etched on the wall. Somebody Jardine, and it's September the 12th, 1899, paper hanger. I mean, what a lovely name, paper hanger. Not decorator, I'm a paper hanger. It was such a, an understandable thing to want to do, to, to kind of sign your name, because you were proud of what you'd done. You'd done a good job. We think that this part of the house, there was a massive renovation just before 1900. We think all of this was built on. And upstairs in the farmhouse, Rosie has uncovered further names. It's a Dennis Boyle, and he's written his name and address. So I looked this Dennis Boyle up. I found him in the 1881 census, and I found him living at an address with somebody O'Donnell. And I found that um, when he was 22, he married a Scottish lass, and they had eight children. I think he came here as a, as a farm labourer, and maybe his uncle or, or his cousin came along with him. The layers of history, the layers of time, give a place its atmosphere. So knowing about who was here before, um, yeah, it's, it's really interesting to us. From the farm labourer Dennis Boyle to the paper hanger Jardine, those who pass through this farmhouse have left their mark. And in a hundred years' time, someone else will surely uncover the historical trace of Anthony and Rosie. Over 200 miles south, renovation heavyweights Lucy and Seb are perfecting their plans for their very own ensuite. So basically, we're thinking like floor to ceiling because we don't want like dust on the top. Yeah. Having replaced the rotten joists and repaired the floor themselves. Probably like a double door that opens. Their next job of crafting some cupboards has been handed over to a professional. Yeah, because then it just looks like a built-in yeah. Yeah, built yeah. wardrobe. Looks like it was meant to be. Yeah. yeah. And Carpenter Steve is a man who measures up. Finally, we're getting to a point where we're doing like real, real interior stuff now. So everything we've thought about for the last like two and a half years and like planned in our heads is now physically happening. The top could maybe be like, could be like sh more shelves at the top with like, if that's easier, and then like the hanging space. As you can see, I'm very excited. <laughs> The whole kind of focus for this space has been like quite a calm, relaxing space and something that flows through from bedroom into the ensuite. So that like traditional feel with like your modern kind of like elements. And whilst planning for the cupboards, it becomes very clear. So you could just have a stud, stud there. So you could just have it that wide. I think that would be more pleasing to the eye. That Seb has a vision, a very straight one. So we're talking about the opening that leads through from the master bedroom into the master ensuite and how that has to be, there is no negotiations, exactly in line with the fireplace, which then means it's exactly in line with the roll top bath and where the taps are. Because Seb feels like if he gets out of bed every day and comes around the corner and it's not dead in the middle, it will not sit well. He will forever look at it. So. We're now talking about having to add a bit of stud work or something into here to lose like this space here. So then this is more in line. Zen. Zen. Seb and Lucy are pouring their heart and soul into their renovation and have set the bar extremely high. It's a standard, I think, I think, like, like start, start at where we, the level that we want to be at for the rest of the house, you know. But if we're talking millimetres, surely you're not going to see it, Sebby. I mean, I'm being a bit pedantic, aren't I? There's nothing pedantic about striving for perfection, Seb. It just means Steve will have to measure in millimetres if he's to get your approval. I mean, it's not just a door frame, it's, yeah, like a... Yeah, picture frame, so it's framing the view into there from out here in the bath and the... Yeah, it's sort of staged. That is important. So that's a walk-in wardrobe, floor-to-ceiling cupboards, with the fireplace in line with the bathtubs and door frame. Steve, you best get to work. Coming up... Anushka and Greg are all at sea as they try to solve the mystery of their 187-year-old home. We're about... 
500 metres from the cave entrance. I'm really excited. I've seen so many pictures of these caves. Lucy and Seb carry the true weight of their bathroom renovation. Guy had said, please, can you bring some muscle because the bath's really heavy. Lucy, like me and Lucy turned up in, you know, the truck and he's like, you know, so where are, where are these strong men that, that, you, that you brought with you? And I was like, here I am. <laughs> And Rosie digs up some fascinating history about her Georgian farmhouse. For 500 years, this whole area was pretty lawless. Heart races like a kite. Coast at Anushka and Greg's 187-year-old Penali house. See where that goes. Work continues on transforming one of their basement rooms into a gorgeous guest bedroom. Today, they are starting to dig into the wall to reveal what they think is the original fireplace. But they're also hoping to find something else hidden behind the brickwork. Evidence of the elusive smuggler's tunnel. Dig into the wall to see if we can find, one, the fireplace, and two, whether there's any more interesting elements of the wall behind there, really. And if we find it, it's going to be a dramatic tunnel because we've already calculated that it's about 300, 350 metres to the sea. So that's one long tunnel. A few hours later, and Greg's digging has uncovered the basement's original fireplace. But so far, no evidence of the secret tunnel. Yeah. With one eye on making progress on the room, Anushka's keen to see if a fire surround that they removed from the kitchen in the main house will fit with her design. Oh, God. I think that's going to be like a really main feature of the basement. Yeah. But despite all their best efforts and backbreaking work, once again, Penali House refuses to reveal any evidence of a secret tunnel. Time for Plan B. With Anushka and Greg's house standing tantalizingly close to the sea, today they are setting sail to look at local caves near their house, where 18th century smugglers are said to have hidden their booty. First time out for the harbour, that's pretty cool. It's going to be nice seeing Boss Castle from a totally different perspective. We're hoping maybe working from the sea backwards <laughs> might be a bit more successful today. Good morning. Chris, the Boss Castle harbour master, has agreed to be their guide. We're going to have a look for this tunnel entrance. Anyway, here we go. This is so fun. There is lots of evidence to suggest that it's real. It's in lots of historical books, so we want to be the ones to uncover this tunnel. We're about 500 metres from the cave entrance. I'm really excited. I've seen so many pictures of these caves. In 18th century Britain, Huge taxes were imposed on everyday goods in order to fund overseas conflicts. And in Cornwall, smuggling was an essential way for a community to survive. Just under the green algae on the cliffs is a cave where illicit goods could have been brought in. That's the cave entrance. That's the, cave entrance there. That's the tunnel yeah. entrance, yeah. yeah. The choppy waters make it impossible to get any nearer to the cave entrance for a closer look where we just saw the entrance to the tunnel lines up perfectly with the line to the house, if you look from above on a map. So actually, today is making even more sense because it's exactly where we thought it was going to be. Should 
curiously enough, you've got a white marker there, which is rather coincidental, isn't it? Ah, the white marker, I think, in the rocks. Oh. Could the white marker have been used to guide the smugglers towards the cave? That's the house, Alan. Right up there. Yeah. Seeing the cave's entrance might not be proof of a tunnel at Penali House. Which means, for now, the secret smuggler's tunnel will just have to remain the stuff of legend. With the mystery of the tunnel unsolved, the ongoing renovation of the basement continues. Anushka has some exciting plans for the centerpiece of the guest bedroom. A show-stopping headboard which upholsterer Paul has been busy working on. Right, there you go, there's your... Uh... Oh, it looks so nice as a big piece. This is my favourite flower. That's beautiful. It's got all the right colours in. Although this one is also very gorgeous as well. They need to work out which flower gets the top spot. And it's complicated. If you want to centralise that one... Yeah. Then we're down to here. But we've got to match this half of it, again, <laughs> to... Uh, There's to way too seat. much maths involved yeah. in this. So cool seeing it on the headboard. This is that in the middle? Mark. So there's no way you could just pull it and stretch it? Well, the thing is, is well, this is going to be slightly more padded. Oh, of course. So it just makes it a little bit bigger to pull over. With a headboard headache to resolve and an entire basement still in need of major TLC, it's safe to say Anushka and Greg still have a long way to go on their renovation journey. Over 350 miles away in Barrow-upon-Humber, Lucy and Seb's ensuite is taking shape. With some walls freshly plastered, they can now turn their attention to the part every renovator looks forward to. We have bought lots of bits for the bathroom now. I think I've waited a very long time to get to this kind of, like, the fun part, I call it, buying all your bits and bobs. They have just received delivery of their brushed brass fixtures and his and hers sinks. They're sort of modern, aren't they, but they're sort of minimal, yeah. not too flashy. But, yeah, so his and hers, and then this, they will we'll basically panel this bit of the wall, like, half panel, and then this will sort of be coming out of the, out of the wall. Um, which I think might look quite, quite nice, I think. I hope so. <laughs> I better do. Boy, no. <laughs> Lucy and Seb's vision for their ensuite is to seamlessly combine the old with the new. And to do this, they've sourced a period bath online. The guy had said, please, can you bring some muscle because the bath's really heavy. And we turned, well, me and Lucy turned up in, you know, the truck and he's like, you know, so where are, where are these strong men that you, that you brought with you? And I was like, here I am. <laughs> Um, and he was like, you're not going to lift that. I said, you know what I bet? We will. Never underestimate the power of a woman. The period features don't just end with the bath, as Seb also has a restoration project of his own. And I'm also going to be uh, removing some uh, rust from the cast iron toilet. Right. I guess I didn't just buy a porcelain one. Of course he didn't. The 19th century toilet took them to another part of Lincolnshire and a vintage collector. Just found a cast iron loo from an old tugboat or steam train or, you know. But getting it thrown ready is quite the process. Seb uses a chemical solution that reacts to the decades of rust on the toilet, breaking it down to reveal the cast iron. This will allow Seb to inspect the integrity of the loo before then sanding it all back and using a red oxide primer, which creates a smoother surface for painting and also protects it from future rust. I do sometimes wish I could do the Instagram click and it just be done. But, you know, in reality, if you're going to do it properly, it takes time. You've got to have the right prep work. Then you'll get a good finish on it. But there's something nice about being able to bring it back to life. Lucy gets cracking, sanding the rust and old paint off the vintage roll-top bath. We're done with the sanding and it's smooth all over. We just need to get the residue off it now before we can put the undercoat on it. A 
After priming the bath with an undercoat, Lucy paints it with a soft, plaster-coloured eggshell paint. With the first coat of the bath almost complete, the look for the ensuite is coming into focus. It's the first kind of visual of, like, colour going into the space. In a week's time, the wardrobes will be fitted and they'll be in the same colour, so it's quite a big... It's going to... The space will change quite, you know, a lot. Two hundred miles away, back in the Scottish borders near Hoyk, Rosie and Anthony are turning their attentions to maintaining the exterior of their Georgian farmhouse. So where are you going to put this stuff up? You're straight up front. So we've got a end of gutter overflowing. Then there's three leaks on the back of the house, and we've got a gutter outlet there that's. Um, Got a leak on it, and that's where it's all. That's why it's all green, green, green in that corner. Yeah. Replacing guttering might not be the most glamorous of renovation jobs, but it's certainly one of the most essential. Today we're just doing quick repairs, so it's water's not running down walls. Without working gutters, water can do irreversible damage to any property. So while Anthony busies himself with the repairs, Rosie has a more rewarding job to do. I think I must have buried about 150, 200 bulbs along here um, over the last few days. Oh, that sun's gorgeous on your back. That's really lovely. We tried to have a rule that if it's gorgeous weather, you have to make the most of it because it's going to be a long winter. This is all planting for the future. While Rosie likes to look forward, Living in such an old building, she can't help to also look back. And so, in between renovating, she's been busy uncovering more of the farmhouse's fascinating history. So I've managed to find the first record of a tenant here at 1709, which suggests that uh, there was probably inhabitants here late 1600s. Um, and that's just at the time when um, this whole area was starting to settle down. Because, of course, with it being um, the borderlands between England and Scotland, it was pretty much um, ravaged by war. So for 500 years, this whole area was pretty lawless. It was run by the border reavers. The word reaver means raider and the Reaver families were constantly raiding each other's properties. And the principal Reaver families in this part of the borders were the Scots of Buccleuch, the, the Elliots, the Armstrongs and the Kerrs. With these border family uh, names in mind, we came across this, W.E. 1898. I started to try to find out who, who lived here. And I found a document and the name Elliot uh, comes up. So we know Elliot was one of those Reaver families. I've now found documentation to place a William Elliot at this property. And at that time, um, we think that all the major modernizations that were done, uh, which we think were done at the end of the 19th century, were probably done by William Elliot. Further evidence of the mark of William Elliot can be found downstairs on the wall of the old scullery. Here, Rosie has taken rubbings using lightweight paper and rubbing wax. Over on this side, we've got um, the name Bill Elliot. So, W.E., William Elliot, Bill Elliot, and we've got 1898. So that matches the inscription on the garden wall. So this is where I've been doing all my research. There's various bits and pieces that I've, that I've found. A document called the Hoyk Book of Words. And in here, there is a, a list of, of names attached to this building. The actual place has been inhabited in some form for, for a very, very long time. But there's loads more to find out and lots of jigsaw pieces still to find and, and slot together. So, um, yeah, the search goes on. Coming up... Please don't whack the doors. 
navigating obstacles at Lucy and Seb's ensuite renovation. Please don't hit the bath. <gasps> and a change of direction. Can we go backwards? In Anushka and Greg's guest bedroom design. I'd forgotten that it doesn't have a space for a chair. Hmm, it could be back to the drawing board with whether the chair is going to fit in this position. At Grove House in Lincolnshire, Lucy and Seb are pulling out all the stops to create an elegant ensuite. Oh my gosh! Their bespoke cupboards are being installed, period furniture is in place, and the cast iron bath is now fully restored. Please don't whack the doors. Today, Lucy and Seb want to agree on a colour for their cast iron fireplace. Please don't hit the bath. <gasps> oh my god. Oh my gosh. If you're going to restore something, put it in the space and then it just informs the decision what to do with it, doesn't it? I think it's nice Which because like it matches to. the this and that's it's, it like draws you sound like I know what I'm talking about, but it draws you through the little alcove, doesn't it? Like into the space. Yeah, it's sort of mysterious. It's like, why if is that? If it was that? white, it wouldn't do that, I don't think. As the wardrobes take shape, Lucy and Seb's vision is becoming even clearer. It's going to completely transform the space and the plan is to frame the fireplace in the bath, isn't it? Yeah. But there is still a mountain of work that needs to be done. Over the next few days, wardrobes will be finished. Uh, the rest of the coving is going to go up. We're going to run the panel mould that goes over the bath and have that put up, aren't we? Yeah. With Seb's vintage loo being salvageable, Lucy is giving it a coat of paint to match the bath. It's like all your ideas that you've had for you know, a really long time are now kind of come into fruition, aren't they, in front of your yeah, eyes? Yeah. It sets a good tone, I think, for the rest of the house, like the standard and the style, hmm. uh, the finish. So I think we, no, we, we've done it justice, haven't we? Yeah. Two weeks later, and Seb and Lucy are still working on the ensuite. So the most finished room. Yeah, it's getting there. But they are another step closer to the finishing line. I'm really pleased that it's coming on a treat, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah. It's like the first room that's really kind of propelled forward. Five months ago, Lucy and Seb started their ensuite renovation in what was once a dark, damp bedroom with rotten floors and exposed brick walls. Today, it's well on the way to becoming a stylish ensuite, combining period charm with some contemporary touches. French antique mirrors hang above porcelain his and hers basins that sit on upcycled French oak bedside tables. I think it looks really quaint. It's gonna be nice once that paneling's in. Put a nice sill on there so we can... Put your toothbrush on it. Or... Well, so. we'll see. Though not finished, the cast iron toilet has been painted a soft plaster colour, complementing the bar. It needs a bit more work, actually, the toilet. Oh, you're kidding. Does it need a bit more work? Mm, well, no, actually, it's shabby chic. No. And the bespoke wardrobe, made with moisture resistant MDF and tulip wood doors, are almost finished. Work in progress, but. Yeah, nearly there. The doors have been fitted. We've yet to get the uh, handles delivered. And obviously the innards need to be popped in. But the best has been saved till last. The main kind of like feature in the room was always going to be the cast iron freestanding bath. We've matched the color to the wardrobes. Found some lovely brass hardware to go in it. Our whole kind of vision for this room was this um, kind of walk through, framing the bath and the fireplace. And then obviously the, yeah, the panel mould is in line with it as well. Beautiful. Uh, and then we're gonna have a nice brass light that comes down. With plumbing, electrics and painting still to do, Seb and Lucy take a moment to catch their breath. I don't really look at it and think, oh, we've still got a lot to do. I think, oh my gosh, look how far we've come already. You look at what it is at the present and you look ahead. Now we're getting there with the ensuite. I feel like, yeah, we can do this. Yeah, like, can, if we yeah. can do every room to that standard, this house will be amazing. Yeah. Why can't we do all of it? Back on the Cornish coast, 
Anushka and Greg are transforming one of their basement rooms at Penali House into a gracious guest bedroom. Greg, have you got another brush? Over the last few weeks, they have built a hearth for the newly excavated fireplace and finished it off with the old fire surround that they removed from the kitchen in the main house during phase one of their renovation. With the ceiling papered in large green and off-white stripes, the walls pristine white and Anushka's eye-catching headboard in place, they can now focus on those all-important finishing touches. So this dressing table um, originated in Cornwall and it's come down a family tree and ended up in Hazelmere in Hampshire. And the lovely owners of it contacted me on Instagram. OK, ready? Awesome. Shall we go backwards? Um, I'm OK. The previous owners wanted it to be returned to its place of origin and find a home in a period property. I think this is going to match the bed really well. Hopefully it's going to look good. I've re-upholstered a chair for here and I'd forgotten that it doesn't have a space for a chair. So, hmm, it could be back to the drawing board with whether the chair is going to fit in this position or whether we put the dressing table in that alcove. So we might have a little play. But it's nice that it's in. It's starting to feel like a home now. Now we're getting furniture in. So it's cool. Anushka reupholstered a chair which will match the bed's headboard covered in the same fabric. It's been a real labour of love, this little chair. You just don't want to mess it up at the last hurdle with this trim. There we go. I think that's it. Now we're getting to the really fun bit, because this is when my design element really, really comes into its own. That's wicked. Oh, it's a picture within a picture? Yeah, with the fabric. And from the start, I can always visualise how the room's going to look, but nobody else can see what I can see. So sometimes when I'm making decisions and wallpaper's going on the ceiling and people are thinking, what is she doing? But now it's all coming together. It's lovely because people can start to see my vision. Three weeks later, and it's the moment of truth for Anushka's vision. I'm excited about this one. Yeah. Once a cold and cluttered basement room, this drafty storage space and workshop has been completely transformed. I love this room. It's pretty incredible. Anushka and Greg have created an exquisite bedroom, worthy of any high-end boutique hotel. The neutral walls with then the pop of colour around and the ceiling just brings the whole thing to life. I always start a room with something that I really love and I've wanted to use this fabric for so long. So that was kind of like the starting point for the orange, the pink fireplace. Ah, the fireplace, an original feature reinstated in the room, thanks to their ongoing quest to discover the smuggler's tunnel. Thinking back, was it five months ago, Harry and I were with a Kango hammer, <laughs> yeah. breaking it back out again, so... Um, Blood, sweat and tears. It definitely didn't carry on to the secret tunnel, so uh, it's, it still The still mission continues. continues. Yeah. Opting for a half-tester bed rather than a traditional four-poster bed gives the room a focal point without overpowering the space. It's been really fun actually experimenting in this room and trying different things. It's the first time I've done one of these half tester beds. And I absolutely love it and it makes it really unique down here and it has its own like wow factor. There are wow factors at every turn. From the original flagstone floor which has been lovingly restored to donated and upcycled furniture. We were so lucky to find this unit. Yeah. Well, this, this was a void. We didn't have anything to go here, did we, until... A week ago. And it worked so well with my £20 charity shop mirror that I didn't know where it was going to go, but I just had to buy it. Well, it's all recycled, really, isn't it? And it's the details that help unify this eclectic mix. Anushka and Greg have pulled out all the stops to bring a welcoming warmth to this once damp and drafty basement room. It's been so much fun, this room. It's just been like a paint palette of colour. I feel like the basement was always going to be the poor guests that didn't have a guest room upstairs were going to get put in the basement. But actually, I don't feel like that at all. I think oh, people will request to be down yeah. here because it is like a self-contained suite. It's awesome. 
Another room down. Amazing. Yeah. Next time, in Lincolnshire, Lucy and Seb step up. When we first viewed the house, the staircase was like that wow factor, that centre point of the house. To tackle their crumbling Victorian staircase. There's nothing wrong in that up, really, is there now? Well, it's dry rot, isn't it, there, you can see. Alan and Catherine cook up an alfresco living space. We're adding our, our mark to it, really, and making it ours. For their enormous terrace in Shropshire, the whole space on the pathway down to the drive is about 600 square metres, so it's huge. And trouble in paradise for Anushka and Greg. I just don't understand why you would not do that when the whole room is going to be matching. With some off-plan panelling in their Cornish dream home. Tell him to take all this out and start again.